Welcome back to VKind Connects. I'm your host, Shabnam Islam. It's a new year and we're celebrating Veganuary all month long with an extra special set of VKind Connects interviews highlighting our VKind community members, asking them why they went vegan and how it's changed their lives. Today, we have a very special guest, Annie Zipkin, welcoming us here all the way from California. So a California girl now at heart. Annie, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. So I, I love your story, and I'm so excited that we get to share this with the Be Kind community, because really, your veganism journey started kind of recently, but you've spent a lifetime as a vegetarian. So let's Absolutely. go ahead and share that. So when I was younger, I remember hearing this word vegetarian, and there was something about it that interested me. And I started noticing a lot of my heroes in life, like Gandhi and George Bernard Shaw, with this thing called vegetarians. So I started researching it a little, and I said, wow, those people do not eat dead animals. This is so impressive. And one day I was home, and my mom was cooking lamb chops. And I looked at her and I said, lamb, like little lambs. <laughs> and it was that connection. And I just said, that's it. That, that's it. I, I'm not eating dead animals anymore. This is too gross for me. And I stopped and I never looked back. And now that was 53 years ago. And I have not eaten that in that many years. And I didn't do it. It wasn't really trendy. Right. There weren't any vegetarian <laughs> restaurants or health food stores or anything. So I did a lot of improvising and um, I wasn't looking at being healthy. I was 17 years old and that wasn't my concern. My concern was not eating animals. And so I've never looked back and never gone back to that, never tempted. When people look at me and said, how could you do that? And I said, no, how can you do that? <laughs> that is right. That is right. How can you do that? And I love that you connected the dots so young and actually in a time where food science, food tech wasn't what it is today. That was over half a century ago, Annie. And tell us, what made you actually transition from vegetarianism to veganism? Well, it, the hard thing for me always was socially and um, to go to parties. And there'd always be cheese trays and cheese. And cheese was the hardest thing for me to give up. I, I haven't drank real milk from a cow and I don't know when. But of course now, again, it's so much easier. I could go to Costco and buy almond milk in a six pack, you know, which I do. And um, so milk was never, I never liked milk or anything, but cheese was the one stickler. But now it is so amazing. The choices that vegans have on dairy products is incredible. And I love now especially um, Whole Food and Sprouts, a little bit in Trader Joe's. Those are my three main places I shop in Costco. Because Costco here in California, I don't know about everywhere, has a tremendous selection of um, organic vegetables and fruit. It's huge. It's amazing. Um, so now the selection is so great for non-dairy products. And I love it. And I don't have to eat cheese anymore. I don't want to. And I buy um, cashew milk kefir. Um, I love follow your heart like feta cheese. I, I all these things now are made it so easy. And I did go to yeah. the Vegan Fest in Los Angeles this year. Vegan Did Dale. you enjoy it? I loved it. First of all, I mean, it was so great because so many young people Mm -hmm. are aware now and becoming vegan. It was amazing. And they gave away so many samples of really wonderful products. And um, I love celebrating that. And I love to see all the young people there. It was amazing. So Annie, as a lifelong vegetarian, when was it that you actually had your aha moment that consuming dairy was just as damaging as eating meat. And what my friend Jane Velez Mitchell from Unchained TV called dairy is liquid meat. What's your concept on that? Well, I do think eating the animal is much more difficult and worse on your health. Um, I do have an aha moment when 
seeing all the horrible um, additives to dairy is I never thought it was that bad because you weren't killing the animal and actually eating flesh and organs and all these other things that people eat. So I never thought it was that bad because it wasn't so violent um, and that energy, you know, trying to eat that. But um, really discovering all the, the, the dairy-free products was really aha for me that I didn't have to, because I always liked yogurt. I always liked right. those things. But now I buy all the cashew milk yogurt, you know, coconut milk yogurt. Right. Uh, and I love it. I love the it. alternatives are insane. And the, the changes insane. that has just happened to the vegan movement in the last five years alone, from the creations of things like Impossible and Kite Hill and Follow Your Heart, there are cheeses that truly melt like real cheese that, 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 that fool even the biggest meat and dairy eaters, right? Yes. So tell me, Annie, tell me your favorite meals that you love to veganize that people have no idea has any animal products in it. Well, I lived in New Orleans for a long time, and I was truly a fish out of water there, as I don't drink and I don't eat meat and seafood. So I used to like to make the red beans, um, big pot of red beans, and I would use field roast sausages. And people could never tell the difference because they were spicy. I guess I got the Italian variety. of the, And I love field roast. I think they're a great company. They really make some, you know, foods. But I would like to say that... Um, I think a lot of those uh, pretend meats and all are really great for transitioning for people yes. who are getting ready to do that. But I, I don't think they're that healthy. And I do try to not eat that kind of thing maybe more than once a week. Although I do like a lot of the products. I like the chicken nuggets. I like the seitan strips um, and some of the uh, meatballs, meatless meatballs. And I do enjoy that kind of thing. But the thing that I've learned recently, and that is through a lot of blogs and a lot of things, is that vegan does not mean healthy. That's you know, so and, true. And people want to, you know, I mean, Oreos are vegan. <laughs> yeah, but I love me some Oreos. They're always in our cabinet, especially the gluten-free ones, so they're just crushing the game. Keep it up, Oreos. <laughs> right, right. I understand all that, but when people right. really get into this, you know, I didn't do this to become healthy. Maybe I have a better result in my life because I feel like my body hadn't worked that hard in trying to digest meat. You know, so I think that was definitely an ace, but I didn't do it to be healthy. I didn't know right. anything about that when I was young. So, um, and who cares about that at 17 when you're like, when you're actually healthy, right? And able right. bodied, that's not really the forefront of your mind. Um, and Absolutely. that's such a good point. Like Absolutely. But I see a lot of people now, I mean, it's just, um, they don't really care that much about healthy. They, they, they care a lot about veganism, which is great. That's wonderful. But I think we need to really stress healthy. It's okay to have Oreos once in a while, but you can't, you know, make a steady diet. Everything in moderation. Fake, everything. Everything the in moderation. Fake meats, everything. I love that you say that, Annie, because, you know, we are a, a space where we do want to invite people over to the greener side of things, right? We're like, we want you to eat more plants and we want you to eat things that are less cruel and have less of an impact on the climate. However, still eating heavily fatty, saturated, and it, you know, some plants have very heavy amounts of saturated fat. These, it, everything in excess is still not good for the system. So finding that balance. Um, Tell me, like, I love making meatballs with some mushrooms and walnuts, you know, chop them up on a food processor and voila, you have yeah. this amazing meaty texture that you can flavor with salt, pepper, and some other herbs. And it's just, it wows me. Um, what are some of your food hacks that you've realized that you can make without some meat substitution? Yeah, well, you know, I live alone. So when I had my family and we were vegetarian, I used to cook a lot more. So I don't cook as much anymore. And I, I, it's a problem because I don't want to eat convenience foods. 
because I realized they are not so good to my health. I'll go through Trader Joe's. I'll go, oh my God, look at this. Looks great. And it's vegetarian. And I pick up the package and inevitably I put it back. Mm -hmm, they just mm -hmm. use too many um, canola oils and palm oil and just things I don't want to ingest. So um, I don't have a lot of hacks. I used to use tofu a lot for things like regatta cheese. I thought mm. that was a great discovery. When you how do you a make ricotta tofu. cheese? Tell me how you make ricotta cheese from tofu. You just, take, you just take that block of tofu and crumble it. You just crumble it and add some herbs and all to it, and it's just that texture like regatta cheese. So I used to use that to substitute a lot of things in lasagnas and regatta, you know, stuffed shells and things like that. So I do, and I love tofu. And people will say, oh, it's got all that estrogen and, you know, I'm a man and I can't eat it. And I'm like, I've been eating tofu for 50 years and I don't seem to have an estrogen problem. And maybe it even helped me when I went through menopause. I don't know, really, because I didn't have a terrible transition either. So, you know, I do love tofu. And I think that is a, a really good... Um, I guess, substitute, whether you put it in the air fryer. And I love my wok. I think my wok is my favorite kitchen tool. And I've had it for, believe it or not, 50 years. So, Annie. <laughs> and the same wok. So, oh, I love that. And that's, that's, that's what we like to call sustainability in our culture, right? <laughs> Absolutely so, sustainable. So, so, tell us, for a vegan community who is approaching this plant-based tra transition later in life. What do you have to tell them? Is it too late? It's never too late. <laughs> it's never too late. I think you have to just look at what one is eating and realize what that is that you're eating. And I think most people do not want to think about that, meat eaters. They just don't want to connect with that that was an animal. And I would say that those transitional meats and are really a good thing to see that there is an option without killing animals. And, and the farm factoring, you know, you, you just, it's just so awful. I think when people are exposed to that and see it, they understand it a lot more and, and maybe could be convinced not to to eat that kind of thing and put that in your body. Just the whole energy about all of it is just so awful. That's right. It's got to go somewhere. It's got to go somewhere. Yeah, and you putting it in your body and eating it, you know, that's just not good at all. And then people will say to me, oh, I'm a vegetarian, but I eat fish. Oh, and I like chicken too. And I'm like, oh, no, you're talking like you're not. A I don't care about labels. And right. then people want to label themselves something. You could call yourself whatever you want. So I'd rather call myself a vegan. <laughs> so, I love you need that. A label. <laughs> I love that. And that and there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, Annie Zipkin, the one and only that's here to tell you that it's never too late to start something new. You don't need a label. You don't need to classify yourself. You just need to eat more plants and keep animals off your plate. And that wraps up this episode with Annie Zipkin. To watch this episode and many more, go to www.bekindconnect.com.